Ladies and gentlemen, this program is for you, not your children. The story you are about to hear is true. Only the names have been changed to protect the innocent. Fatima Cigarettes, best of all long cigarettes, brings you Dragnet. You're a detective sergeant. You're assigned a homicide detail. A woman and her two-year-old child disappear suddenly. There's no apparent reason for it. Five days pass. No trace of them. Your job? Find them. Webster's Dictionary. Definition of the word compare. Compare. Examine for purpose of discovering resemblance or difference. Now, let's compare Fatima with any other king-size cigarette. The resemblance. Fatimas are the same length as other king-size cigarettes, 85 millimeters. Fatima has the same circumference, one and one sixty-fourths inches around. And Fatima filters the smoke exactly the same long distance as other king-size cigarettes. The difference. In Fatima, the difference is quality. You see, Fatima contains the finest domestic and Turkish tobaccos superbly blended to make Fatima extra mild. You get all the advantages of extra length plus Fatima quality, which no other king-size cigarette has. So compare Fatima yourself. Your first puff will tell you... Ah, that's different. Yes, in Fatima, the difference is quality. Buy Fatima. Best of all long cigarettes. Dragnet, the documented drama of an actual crime. For the next 30 minutes, in cooperation with the Los Angeles Police Department, you will travel step by step on the side of the law through an actual case transcribed from official police files. From beginning to end, from crime to punishment, Dragnet is the story of your police force in action. It was Tuesday, April 20th. It was overcast in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of homicide. My partner's Ben Romero. The boss is Captain Blaine Steed. My name's Friday. I was on the way back from communications, and it was 1.35 p.m. when I got to room 42. Homicide. Hi, Joe. What's doing? Oh, not much, Max. Where'd Ben go? Inside, Captain's office. Be right back. Oh, thank you. Keeping you busy? All about the same. A little hectic around the house, though. Oh, that's right. Ben mentioned something about that. You're getting ready for a wedding out there, aren't you? Yeah, my daughter Alice. She's sure getting a nice fella. Is that so? Yeah, ambitious kid. Part-time accountant. Goes to law school at night down Loyola. Real nice fella. Mm -hmm. When are you getting married? A week from Saturday. It's going to be a big church thing. Sure glad it doesn't happen often. Oh, how do you mean? Big production. Never saw so many bills in my life. New dress for Alice, going away luggage, bridesmaids' dresses, eats, drinks, new carpet for the hall, new curtains in the living room. Wife must think I'm made of this stuff. Well, you should have had all boys, Mac. Yeah. You're giving your daughter away, huh? Yeah. Well, it reminds me, i got to be sure and send my suit to cleaners, get a good press job on it. Sure is funny. Huh? What's that? It seems for years the wife's been afraid we'd never get Alice married off. Now it's finally in the works, the wife's still unhappy. Oh, well, how's that? Goes around, moping around the house, wiping at her eyes, keeps muttering something about losing her little girl, her little girl's leaving her. I don't know. Well, how old's your daughter? Thirty-two. Well, I'll be down in stats office if anybody wants me. Right, Mac. Yeah. Oh, pardon me, Ben. Excuse me, I didn't see you. Okay. Hi, where you been? Making a couple of phone calls. I think we might have some. Hmm? Yeah, what's that? The Gorman case. Uh -huh. Had a call from one of their neighbors while you were gone. Uh, where is that calendar of ours? Gee, I don't know. Oh, here, I got one in my pocket here in my wallet. Oh, good. Here you are. Oh, thanks. Well, let's see now. Uh, Mrs. Gorman and her little girl Nancy disappeared on the 15th. Is that right? Yeah, Thursday. Why? And the husband, Mr. Gorman, filed a missing complaint on Friday morning, right? Yeah. What are you getting at? Well, you remember when we talked to Mr. Gorman, he couldn't think of any reason why his wife and his little girl should disappear like they did? Yeah. Remember me asking him the question if his wife ran around at all, if she was interested in any other man? That's right. He told you no, didn't he? This man who just called in, he lives out in the Gorman neighborhood. He swears up and down that Mrs. Gorman was keeping company with another man. Well, who is this neighbor, anyway? 
Name's John Pearson. Lives about four blocks from the Gormans. Well, we talked to neighbors a lot closer than that to the Gormans. They didn't seem to know anything about it. What else did Sky tell you? Well, let's see. Uh, the man Mrs. Gorman was supposed to be running out with is a Ralph Kane. Mm-hmm. Lives next door to Mr. Pearson. Well, how'd this Pearson sound to you? Mm, pretty typical neighborhood watchdog. But well, here's the interesting part. Uh-huh. Mrs. Gorman and little daughter Nancy disappeared last Thursday. Now, according to Pearson, this Ralph Kane hasn't been seen around since Friday night. He told me on the phone he saw Kane toss a couple of suitcases in his car late Friday night and drive off. Said he hasn't come back yet. Yeah, it might be something. Well, how much of a romance was Mrs. Gorman supposed to be having with this Ralph Kane? Well, it's pretty heavy, according to Pearson. Said it's been going on for six months, anyhow. And Mr. Gorman didn't know anything about it? He got me there. If he did, he didn't let us in on it. Mm-hmm. What if he'd have any reason to cover it up? Well, it's possible, I guess. Didn't want the scandal. How sure are you that Ralph Kane's really missing? Might be just off on a weekend, huh? No, I checked the place he worked. He's a printer. Didn't show up for work Monday. Didn't show up today either. No message? No excuse? Nothing. I called a friend of Kane's that Pearson knew about. A friend doesn't know where he's going. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess we better get on it. It's the first decent lead in five days. Huh? Yeah. Just thinking, Joe. Neighbors like Pearson? Uh-huh. What would we do without him? Five days before, on a Thursday evening, a Mr. Philip Gorman returned to his home in the Westlake District of Los Angeles to find his wife, Barbara Gorman, and his two-year-old daughter, Nancy, missing. There wasn't any note, no explanation of any kind. A few clothes were gone. Mr. Gorman filed a missing report, and a broadcast and an APB were gotten out on the mother and daughter. Neighbors, friends, and relatives were checked. No leads. Routine investigation failed to turn up anything. Mr. Gorman could give us no explanation for the disappearance. After three days, we got out of a radiogram. Still no results. Tuesday, 1.50 p.m., Ben and I got in the car and drove out to see John Pearson, who'd phoned in the information about Mrs. Gorman's supposed boyfriend, Ralph Kane. We found Pearson out on the back porch of his home, feeding some milk to a pair of house cats. I thought everybody knew that, Sergeant. Mrs. Gorman running around with that Ralph Kane. I'm no busybody. I wouldn't have mentioned it all if this hadn't happened. You say Kane had been seeing Mrs. Gorman for the last six months. Is that right, Mr. Pearson? About six months. That's how long I've seen it go on. And James, don't be such a hog. Let Fred have some of the milk, too. Greedy little devils. Do you know of anybody else in the neighborhood who's been aware of this, Mr. Pearson? I mean, Mrs. Gorman and this Ralph Kane. Well, I know for sure that Thelma White next door knows about it. She's mentioned it to me. Mm -hmm. Kane used to park with Mrs. Gorman near that vacant lot by Thelma's house. Those were the nights that Mr. Gorman was working late. Would you know if Mr. Gorman was aware of this, that his wife was running around with another man? I'm pretty sure he did, Sergeant. That's the strange part about it. How do you know, sir? For George, the man who delivers the groceries, he just happened to mention it to me once. Mm Mm-hmm. All right, James. Right, it's all gone. Now run off and play. Uh, yes, George, the grocery man, he made a delivery to the Gormans once and heard them around about it. George said Mr. Gorman was very mad, talked divorce, all that sort of thing. Well, how about the Gorman's little girl, Mr. Pearson, little Nancy? Tragic, Sergeant, such a sweet little thing. Mrs. Gorman kept her under an iron hand. Imagine, the little girl was only two years old. Mrs. Gorman was after her with a stick all the time. She's not much of a mother, not the way I look at it anyway. Well, what's your opinion of all this? Do you think that Ralph Kane has run off with Miss Gorman? Well, what else can you think? The two of them carry on for six months. Mrs. Gorman disappears Thursday. Mr. Kane leaves Friday night. What else can you think? Uh, this neighbor of yours, Thelma White, uh, does she live in this house over here? Over on the right? Yeah, that's right, right next door. You go over and talk to her. She's home now. Thelma will tell you the same thing I did. All right, sir. Thank you very much. Not at all, Sergeant. Just one thing I can't understand about Mrs. Gorman's little girl, little Nancy. Yeah. Can't quite understand why she's gone. Doesn't seem to fit somehow. How do you mean? If you're going to run off with a man, you don't take your family along. Two fifteen p.m. We went next door and talked with a neighbor, Thelma White. She told us the same story as Pearson. From the two of them, we got the description. DMV furnished us with the license number of Ralph Kane's car. We checked further with Kane's friends, relatives, and his landlady. No one had seen or heard from him since late Friday. We searched the duplex where he lived. No leads. We went back to the office and checked Kane through R&I. He had one arrest for petty theft. We got out a broadcast and an APB on him. That night, Ben and I drove out to see the husband and father of the missing woman and youngster, Philip Gorman. He was employed as a groundskeeper at one of the baseball parks in the city. Pretty fair turnout tonight, huh? Yeah. Weather's cleared up a little. Probably helped, huh? 
Where's the groundkeeper shack? Down at the end there? Yeah, you can't see it from here. It's just below the end of the bleachers there. Oh. You come out here very often? Not as often as I'd like to. It's down this way. Hey. Watch your step there, Joe. It's a mud puddle. Yeah, I see it. Oh, uh, sorry. You, you'll have to get back in the stands. You're not allowed down this end. How are you, Mr. Gorman? Fighting Romero. You oh, remember us? Yeah, sure. I didn't recognize you for a minute. You got a few minutes, Mr. Gorman? We'd like to talk to you if we could. We're sure right now if you want. You, you found out something about the wife, the little girl? No, sir. Nothing definite. We've got a few questions we'd like to ask you. Well, that's fine with me. i got nothing to do for a couple more innings. What's it all about? Well, when we talked to you at your house the other day, Gorman, you remember me asking if you could think of any reason why your wife and your little girl should disappear like you did? Yeah, I remember. There's nothing I can think of, Sergeant. Do well, you recall us asking you if your wife might have been interested in some other man, somebody she might go off with? Yeah, yeah, I, I remember all that. I told you I didn't think that was it. Well, now, look, if you know something and you're not telling us because you don't want the scandal, you can forget that, Gorman, because whatever you tell us is in strict confidence, you know. I don't know what you mean, Sergeant. I told you everything I know. Well, we'll be honest with you, Gorman. We think you're trying to cover up. Well, that's not true. I, I don't have anything to cover up. We picked up some new information on your wife this afternoon. We hear she was pretty friendly with a man named Ralph Kane. Lives a few blocks from your house. We hear that you knew what was going on. You and your wife, Barbara, had a row. You talked divorce. How about it? Well, let's go inside the shack here, huh? Get away from some of this noise. Fine, sure. I hope you don't mind it in here. It's a little dirty. I, I keep all the maintenance stuff in here. That's all right, Gorman. Now, how about Ralph Kane? Yeah, yeah. I, I knew about it. It's like you said, all the scandal. I, I just didn't want it to get out. Well, look, if you're going to hold out on us, it's not going to help much to find your wife and little girl. Yeah, I, I know, Sergeant. I just didn't want people to find out what a bum I married him. You know what some neighbors are like. Mm-hmm. I can't understand how it happened. I, I met the wife when I was in the Army. I see. I brought her back out here. Everything was fine. After the baby was born, she started to change. Nothing satisfied her. She began to run around. Nothing but a bum, but I guess I found out too late. Well, now, this Ralph Kane, what do you know about him? Well, he's a single guy. Works at a print shop downtown. He's a pretty good-looking guy. He's got money to spend. That's all Barbara cares about. Well, what's your idea about it? Huh? You think Kane and your wife have gone off together? Well, to tell you the truth, I'm not sure. Maybe they did. I've been trying to check around them all. We're not getting very far. There's only one thing I'm really worried about. That's my little girl, Nancy. I don't care what my wife does or how far she goes. I, I just want my little girl back. That's all. Have you any idea at all where your wife might have gone? No. No, none at all. She didn't know California too well. She's only been out here a year. Mm-hmm. And you don't know any of Kane's friends, his hangouts, or places you think he might go? No. Well, I, I've never even met the guy, Sergeant. I'm going to, though. I, I know what he looks like. I'll meet him. Well, there's just one more thing, Gorman. If your wife was set on running off with another man, why did she take your little girl with her? She well, wasn't too devoted to the baby, I yeah, understand. Yeah, that, that's right. That's what's got me worried. The only thing I can figure out is the wife hated me more than I thought. She knew that I thought Nancy's about you know, the greatest thing alive. I guess rather than let me have her, she took Nancy along with her. Well, is it possible she might drop the baby off of some friend or relative and tell them to keep well, her? Well, I've checked on that already, oh. Sergeant. You got the names of all the people we know. I'm, I'm sure they'd get in touch with me if they had names. Well, we'll double-check them anyhow. All right. Now, if there's anything else comes up, you let us know right away, huh? All right, Sergeant. It, it, it's just the baby, that's all, Nancy. As far as I'm concerned, my wife never lived. It's kind of hard to take in a way. Yes, it is. I think you got the finest setup in the world. Nice home, job, baby, good furniture, everything you need. Yeah. Everything but a wife. The search for the missing wife and the two-year-old daughter went on. The broadcasts and teletypes on Mrs. Gorman and Ralph Kane failed to net us a thing. A week passed. There were no leads. Another week went by. Nothing. The half dozen replies we'd gotten on our teletype went nowhere. They were blind leads. Wednesday, May 5th. We got a call from the manager of an auto court in the south end of the city. He told us that a man, a woman, and a little girl, answering the description of the missing trio, had stopped at his place the night before. Along with Jack McCready from Homicide, Ben and I drove out and interviewed the man. We showed him pictures of Kane, Mrs. Gorman, and two-year-old Nancy. He identified all three. He could give us no idea where they'd gone. We checked through the cottage where they stayed. No, nothing. Just about as clean as you can get. A little something here. Hmm? What's that? Look here. Kid's picture book. A 
Let's huh? see. Yeah, take a look right here. Uh, this book belongs to Nancy Gorman. Well, we know they were here. That's about it. Hey, Sam? Joe? Yeah, Mac. Where are you? Out in the back. Come here. All right. What have you got? Come here. Have a look. Where'd you find that? Poking around this trash barrel here. Looks like part of a little girl's dress, huh? Yeah, there's not much there. Did you find the rest, Ellie? Well, that's all there is. Just that little collar. Right, take a look here, Ben. Mm-hmm. Stains right here. Over here, too. Yeah. What do you think? Mac? Blood stains? I'd say so. We drove back to the office to the crime lab and had Lee Jones run the stains on the dress. He ran a benzidine test and then a biological precipitant. The stains were made by human blood. Well, it still didn't put us any closer to the missing child or her mother. The search went on. We redoubled our efforts. No luck. Another ten days passed. We had a few more responses to our all-points bulletin, but none of them panned out. On May 16th, we got two more leads to check out. They went nowhere. We got back to the office a little after 6 p.m. Better call Mr. Gorman after we check in, huh? Keep him off of our backs. Yeah. I hate to keep telling him the same thing. No word. Yeah. How about it? You call Gorman tonight, huh? All right. Mac? What's doing? Got something for you. Sheriff substation called. East L.A. Now, what about? The Gorman case. They found him. Where? Another auto court right there in East L.A. Ralph Kane and Mrs. Gorman. They got them both under surveillance. How about the little girl, Nancy? Well, that's a hitch. Huh? No sign of her. You are listening to Dragnet. Authentic cases from official files. Now, let's look at our Fatima files. Listed under H. Hardwick. Cedric Hardwick, distinguished actor. He says, I find Fatima a very pleasing cigarette. It has a distinctly better flavor. K. Kelly. Nancy Kelly. Star of the Broadway hit Season in the Sun. She says, Between scenes and after the show, I like to relax in my dressing room and light up a Fatima. They have a really different flavor. And what's important to me, they're extra mild. Listed under L. Lovett, Vice Admiral Leland P. Lovett, United States Navy, retired. He says, I smoked Fatimas when I was a midshipman. I still do, because they have a better flavor and aroma. Fatima is easily the best of all long cigarettes. Friends, our files show Fatima sales are going up. Up every day. The reason for Fatima's ever-increasing popularity can be summed up in two words. Fatima quality. Yes, Fatima gives you all the advantages of extra length plus Fatima quality, which no other king-size cigarette has. So if you smoke a king-size cigarette, compare Fatima. You'll find they now cost the same. But your first puff will tell you... Ah, that's different. Because in Fatima, the difference is quality. Buy Fatima. Best of all long cigarettes. Saturday, May 16th, 9 p.m. Along with Levinson and McCready from Homicide, Ben and I drove out to the sheriff's substation in the east end of the city. One of the deputy sheriffs directed us to the motor court where Mrs. Barbara Gorman and Ralph Kane were under surveillance. We found the two of them in one of the rear cottages. There was no trace of two-year-old Nancy Gorman. Levinson and McCready took Ralph Kane out to the car to interrogate him. Ben and I remained in the cottage with Mrs. Gorman. She was a tall blonde, thin-faced and nervous. She spoke with a decided accent. We questioned her for more than two hours. We got nowhere. Why don't you sit down, Mrs. Gorman? Relax. How can anyone relax these questions? She had no right to do this. Well, maybe you haven't got it straight, Mrs. Gorman. This is a pretty important matter. We'd like to find out about your little girl. I told you I don't know. She ran away. Yes, ma'am. Now, we've had ten different versions. You stopped at a hotel in Nevada and she disappeared. You were at an auto court in Bakersfield. She ran away during the night. We've heard just about all of them. Now, how about the truth? I've told you everything I'm going to tell you. I don't know what's happened to the kid. She's gone. That's all. She's gone. There's got to be an explanation for it. Where is she gone? She ran away. How many times do I have to tell you? I left with Ralph. 
who went out of the city. After a few days, Nancy got lonesome. She wanted to see her father. We were asleep one night, and she ran away. That's all there is to it. Simple. Why can't you understand? Well, you're going to have to do better than that, Miss Gorman. Now, how about the truth? What happened? You can't keep me here all night. Where's Raph? I want Raph. Why'd you take the child with you in the first place, Miss Gorman? It's pretty obvious that you didn't want her. Did Kane want you to take her along? Oh, no. He wanted me to leave her. Just he and I. That's all he wanted. I should have left her there, all this trouble, questions. There's an easy remedy, ma'am. What'd you really do with a little girl? She wanted off. It's the truth. We didn't know it. She wanted off. We couldn't help it. How about the little dress we found in that auto court with stains on it? Same questions. You always ask the same questions. What about the dress, ma'am? Do I always have to repeat? I told you. Ralph got his hand. He was shaving. It was just an old dress, a rag. Ralph bandaged his hand with it. Well, you usually wear bandages a while, don't you? Don't just throw them away. It was only a scratch. He didn't need the rag very long. Quite a few stains on the dress, ma'am. Must have been more than just a scratch. No, it was just a scratch. Can't you believe anything I say? No, not so far. Please. Can't I go outside for a few minutes? I have a headache. It's so hot in here. All right, Miss Gorman. Go ahead, ma'am. Yeah, thanks. The air, so good. Terrible headache. You mind telling us something, Mrs. Gorman? Please. Can't you let me alone for a minute? Why did you leave your husband? Him? Any woman would leave him. It's Raph. I love Raph. And your little girl, what about her? My husband wanted her, not me. I'm just not like that. I didn't want her in the first place. It was a mistake, a terrible mistake. Is that why you got rid of her? What? Now, it's pretty obvious by this time, ma'am. When you left your husband, you took your little girl along for spite. Kane didn't want her. You found out you didn't need her, so you got rid of her. Now, is that it? I didn't say that. You're putting words in my mouth. I didn't say that at all. Joe, Ben? Yeah, yeah Mac, over here. Kane's given us half the story. Shouldn't be too hard to get the rest. It's a lie. There's no story to tell. Nancy ran away. That's all we know. Mac. Kane says they tried some kind of a death pact. He and Mrs. Gorman here got in a room and turned on the gas. He didn't tell you. He didn't tell you. Afraid so, ma'am. That's your boyfriend's story. What else, Mac? Well, as I say, Kane and Mrs. Gorman got in the room, agreed to end it all. They had a little girl with them in the room. Well, why was that? Kane says he doesn't know. Seemed to simplify things, having the kid with him. He tell you what happened? Yeah, they turned on the gas jets. No. Don't. Never mind. Mrs. Gorman? Never mind. You don't have to say it. You want to tell us about it? Mrs. Gorman? Yes. I'll tell you. 3 a.m. We went back inside the cottage at the auto court. We gave her a cigarette, and Barbara Gorman sat down and told us the story. Four days after she'd left with her two-year-old daughter and Ralph Keene, she knew she'd made a mistake. She admitted that she never should have taken the child. She said the little girl seemed to be in their way all the time. Kane was all for deserting the child or sending her back to her father. Mrs. Gorman wouldn't agree to it, just out of pure spite. One night in an auto court, she and Kane had a big drinking party. They brooded over the mix-up that they'd gotten themselves into. Kane didn't have any money to get married. He knew he'd lost his job. Even if they could get married, Mrs. Gorman wasn't sure she could get a divorce. Another full day and night of drinking, and they decided on a lover's death pact. They turned on the gas. I don't get it, Mrs. Gorman. Why'd you have your little girl in the room with you? Why didn't you leave her with somebody, with anybody? Why? She was mine, wasn't she? I thought we could go together, all three of us, but it didn't work that way. Well, what happened? Well, Raph and I woke up. Throats were burning. My eyes were burning. I looked over at Nancy. She wasn't moving. It was just like she was asleep. Well, what'd you do then? We got in the car and left. We found a nice place in the desert. There were nice flowers there. We buried Nancy. How about you and Ralph Kane? You knew you were in deeper. Why didn't you try it again? Oh, we did a couple of times. We loved each other. It's the only thing we could do, but every time we tried, we couldn't go through with it. We tried. We never could finish it. But I've got a job. We were going to buy a gun. Tomorrow, we try again. Can you show us where you buried your little girl? Yes. A place in the desert, out near Palm Springs. It was a nice place. There's lots of nice flowers around. You understand, don't you? We were in love, Raph and I. Yeah. My husband wouldn't understand the way I loved Raph. It was everything. It was the whole world, Raph and I. I didn't mean it that way for Nancy. 
It was a mistake. You've got to understand. I didn't mean it that way. That's the way it is. It doesn't matter. You can't hurt us, Matraff and I. You can't take away what we've got. You'll never take that away. All right. You want to get your coat? Yes. It doesn't matter what happens. It's for Raff. I don't care what they do. I'll keep on loving him. The same way I love him now. It doesn't matter. We'll pay for our mistakes. Yeah, lady. They're going to cost you. At 5 a.m., we put in a call for Lieutenant Lee Jones and the crime lab crew and the coroner. When they arrived at the auto court, we drove to the spot in the desert near Palm Springs where Ralph Kane and Mrs. Gorman pointed out the spot where they'd buried Nancy. The body was uncovered at the exact spot, was taken back to town to the county morgue where an autopsy was performed. Kane and Mrs. Gorman were booked on suspicion of murder. By 5 o'clock that afternoon, we had the results of the autopsy. Yeah, Doc. Uh Uh-huh. Right. Thank you. Bye. What's the story, Mac? Not what we thought. Well, how do you mean? I think Mrs. Gorman sold us a bill of goods. Little girl didn't die in a room full of gas. What'd the doc say? He found two bullet holes in the body. That night, after hours of interrogation, Ralph Kane and Mrs. Barbara Gorman both broke down and confessed that they'd killed the child in cold blood. They pleaded drunkenness, that they weren't responsible for their actions. They were returned to their cells and held without bail. The child's father, Philip Gorman, was notified. The following morning, Ben and I accompanied him to the county morgue. It's this way, Mr. Gorman. Oh, thanks. You sure you want to go through with this, sir? Mr. Gorman? Well, I might as well tell you the truth. I'm not sure I do. It isn't going to help much, Mr. Gorman. Believe me, it didn't. Well, I just wanted to see you just once more. Yeah, well, it doesn't work out. It wouldn't be the same. Not the way you remember. Just wanted to see you. I just wanted to find out. What's that? About a mother, Ralph Kane. Hmm. What is it that can make them do it? Little girl, she's only two. What can make anybody do a thing like that? Your wife called it love. The story you have just heard was true. Only the names were changed to protect the innocent. On September 10th, trial was held in Superior Court, Department 89, City and County of Los Angeles, State of California. In a moment, the results of that trial. And now, here is our star, Jack Webb. Thank you. Friends, tonight you've heard just a few of the reasons why you should smoke Fatima. It sums up this way. Fatima gives you all the advantages of extra length plus Fatima quality, which no other king-size cigarette has. Tomorrow, buy Fatima in the golden yellow package. Remember, they're extra mild with a different, better flavor and aroma. Mrs. Barbara Gorman and Ralph Donald Kane were tried and convicted in Superior Court of murder in the first degree. Mrs. Gorman was sentenced to life imprisonment. Kane received the death penalty. He was executed at the State Penitentiary, San Quentin, California. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bill of Rights section of the United States Constitution protects our freedom. Today, that freedom is endangered by tyranny and aggression. Every American must help make our free government an example to all peoples, by dedicating himself to a constant, active citizenship. Freedom needs you. You have just heard Dragnet, a series of authentic cases from official files. Technical advice comes from the office of Chief of Police, W.H. Parker, Los Angeles Police Department. Fatima Cigarettes, best of all long cigarettes, has brought you Dragnet, transcribed from Los Angeles. Stay tuned for Counter Spy, next over most NBC stations.